Dr. Nada, can you tell us a little bit about what hydronephrosis is? Yes, if you work, break down that word, hydro means water, nephrosis means kidney. So there's water within the kidney. So hydronephrosis is basically a uh, waterlogged kidney, whereby there is uh, fluid in the collecting system, uh, in the uh, outflow track that's from the kidney down to the bladder. So uh, a typical hydronephrosis may be either due to a blockage in the uh, system, either between the pelvis, which is the collecting uh, funnel from the kidney, down to the water pipe, which is a ureter. Then if there's a blockage there, then it's something called a pelvic ureteric junction obstruction, or a blockage between the ureter, the tube between the kidney and the bladder, and the bladder itself. So you'll see hydronephrosis uh, and hydrourea in that situation. The other cause of hydronephrosis is something called vesicouretic reflux, whereby when the bladder is full and the bladder contracts to evacuate the urine from the body, instead of just coming out, it also goes back upwards. So that's called reflux of urine. So the two main causes of Hydronephrosis is either blockage anywhere along the way or reflux of urine from the bladder up to the uh, ureter or all the way up to the kidney. So the problem with hydronephrosis is that when you get stagnant urine, uh, the urine can get infected or the stagnancy or blockage of the urine can cause progressive damage to the kidney itself. In regards to the reflux of urine, reflux up the ureter or up to the kidney doesn't cause too much harm. However, if there is infection in the bladder, the reflux of infected urine towards the kidney can cause kidney damage. So what we want to do is prevent progressive kidney damage so that we preserve both kidneys for the rest of the life of the child. Once you've got kidney damage, it's ir irreversible. And is hydronephrosis a congenital issue or is it something that can develop over time? So it's a mixture of both. Some of them are congenital, some can be a developmental issue, as in uh, sometimes you can get scarring from uh, stones or infection that causes a uh, uh, blockage of the system. But by and large, reflux is usually a congenital problem whereby there's a problem with the valve-like mechanism between the bladder and the ureter. So when it comes to congenital hydronephrosis, um, how, is that, uh, how is that detected? Is that detected with antenatal scans? Or? Yes. Sometimes we can detect the condition antenatally, especially the pelvic ureteric junction obstruction. So where the, the collecting funnel between the kidney and the water pipe, the ureter, there might be a blockage there. So we might identify it antenatally, those ones. Uh, there are other, the, the other one, which is uh, reflux, is often identified later. Yeah, so obstruction is often identified uh, antenatally, and reflux is later, usually. And when it comes to reflux, what, how is that identified? I mean, are there certain symptoms that are presented? Yeah. or? Often the, the children with reflux uh, present with uh, infection, so urinary tract infection. So one of the main things that we need to do when there's a proven urinary tract infection for children is to do an ultrasound scan to check that whether there's an anatomical abnormality. So not just treat the infection with antibiotics, the child should have a, a, ba a baseline ultrasound scan to check the bladder, the ureter and the kidney itself to look for hydronephrosis. If there's no hydronephrosis on the ultrasound scan, then just a simple treatment for the urinary tract infection is sufficient. And when it comes to reflux though, would this be something that presents itself very early on in the life of the child? Or could it even happen when they are four, five, six years? Yeah, it usually presents within the first couple of years of life. Uh, it can present later on. So usually the vast majority are within the couple of, first couple of years. Right, so the symptoms are fundamentally about infection. That's, That's right, how you yes. pick it up. Yes. Like, okay, understand. Um, and therefore, when a diagnosis is made for hydronephrosis, what, what is the treatment? 
Yeah, so we need to look for the cause. So firstly, uh, the treat the investigations involved. You take a urine tract infection. Uh, you, you, if for a urine tract infection, you take urine sample to check for the urine tract infection, whether there's any uh, any uh, blood or any other abnormality in the urine itself. Uh, and then once you've proven that urine tract infection, then you need to do an ultrasound scan. A basic ultrasound scan, look at the kidneys, whether the kidney is swollen or the collecting system is swollen and look in the structure of the bladder or whether there's any abnormalities in the uh, joint between the bladder and the ureter. Once that's done, um, if the diagnosis is not clear, then we can do a few other investigations such as um, MCUG which is a tube into the bladder to, and a dye test to check what the uh, urination uh, looks like, whether there's any reflux of the dye up the, the ureter from the bladder. And if it's clear that it's not uh, reflux, then the likelihood of the uh, condition for hydronephrosis could be a blockage. So if it's a blockage in the, uh, between the pelvis and the ureter, we need to do a few other investigations, look at the function of the kidney, as well as the flow of urine out of the kidney into the ureter. And subsequently, if there is a poor drainage, then surgery is required. So surgery will, will involve uh, disconnecting the, the junction between the pelvis and the ureter, and then rejoining it back with a bigger uh, joint between the two structures. And can this surgery be performed? At what age can this surgery be performed? So at any point in the child's life where there is a significant blockage uh, and the investigation shows there's poor drainage, we need to do the surgery. Yeah. And is the surgery a very complex procedure? It's not too complex. We can, the, the earliest uh, we can do it is a couple of months of age. Uh, and the surgery I perform is keyhole surgery and that's done almost as a uh, procedure where uh, the child will go home within a couple of days and it's not a very invasive procedure the child, children recover very well from this from this operation okay and with a successful operation done what is the recovery process like so often once the uh, surgery is performed well uh, you'll notice that the, uh, all the hydronephrosis would recover gradually and the passage of urine would be much better. In regards to reflux of urine, often as long as there is no infection going up towards the kidney, we don't need to do any per surgery if required. Um, and if the child has recurrent urinary tract infection, then it's indication to intervene whereby we might need to give antibiotics for longer periods or a minor procedure by, by making the valve of the, between the bladder and the ureter more competent by a small injection of, uh, of collagen or some beads to block the uh, opening to create a valve-like uh, effect that will prevent reflux of urine from the bladder up to the uh, kidney. So those, those are slightly more complex to explain, but generally um, they can be done as a day procedure where a child come, come in, have it done and go home almost the same day. Thank you, Dr. Nara.